Steve, great to have you on Investor Stream as always. Again, we're talking to you from Korea today, where you've reported an update on the plan Lilac Solutions pilot plant and the fact that it'll be on site at Catchy very early next year. Firstly, can you give us some context around the plant design uh, where 50,000 to 60,000 milligrams per litre per annum sits and where that figure sits compared to other brine producers in Argentina? And given we've heard some not great news out of Australia of late, how do Argentinian brine stack up against Australian product? Lake is in the lithium triangle in Argentina. The lithium brine producers there are always at the lowest part of the cost curve. So regardless of where the pricing is, they always make money. Our intention with this new process has been to do it more efficiently, to do it more quickly, and to have flexibility of the end product and of their primary products. So first of all, as we break that down, 50, 60,000 milligrams per litre, that's more than 10 times higher than what you get out of an evaporation pond usually. Normally they're somewhere around 3,500, maybe up to 6,000 milligrams per litre. Secondly, you do that in the space of a few hours instead of waiting 6, 9, 18 months to produce it. So that's what's important with both the higher grade and doing it more quickly. And then on to the second part of the process. Because they're low cost, they will do well. We unfortunately have seen some softness in the lithium pricing in the first part of this calendar year. And we've also seen a divergence in the pricing. There's now quite a range of prices because there's a whole range of products. If we go back 18 months ago, there was only one hard rock miner. Now there's nine of them. And we've had some additional lithium brines as well. So by producing a premium end product to the market and being on the low end of the cost curve, we'll be fine both now and in the future. Okay, so just remind us on the comparisons between traditional evaporation methods compared to direct extraction in terms of time frame, cost, impurities. I think you briefly mentioned it there, but could you just expand on that in terms of the comparative spend on associated infrastructure needed to get into production? So first of all, uh, with a time frame, we can produce a concentrated product in the space of a few hours, and then it's what we do with that intermediate product, whether we produce carbonate or hydroxide, and that will be partly dictated by the market and partly dictated by who our off-takers are and who we develop this project together with. Indicatively, to build a plant is about 18 months, like many other our processes. The difference is, although it's 18 months to get into production, we can actually be producing intermediate products out of our pilot plant early next year, and we can probably go to a stage process of, of having some commercial modules initially. So in terms of time frame, it's at least 12 months earlier to, to production, if not 18 months. On cost, we're still down the lower end of the cost curve. That's where the lithium brine produces land. On impurities, this is a big one. The beauty of the process is that we're just taking the lithium out of the brine and then we return that to the aquifer and we concentrate that. So in the process, you don't have high impurities anyway, and then as you concentrate, you only concentrate the lithium. So that means you can produce a quality product. And then comparative spend on associated infrastructure, it's somewhat similar. Uh, instead of spending, say, $120 million on evaporation ponds, we imagine you spend, say, two-thirds of that on the, on the front-end modules. But that's going to come out of our PFS in about eight weeks' time. Okay, Steve. So look, it, it seems that Lake's very confident about this technology, and... Uh Reading through your announcement, it would seem that if this technology is successful, it appears to be a game changer for the industry. Can you talk us through what the pilot program looks like and what's the time frame to determine if you are indeed on a winner here? The reason we're confident on the technology is, first of all, it's fairly simple. The iron exchange has been used for more than 50 years in different parts of the world. It's just a water treatment process. It just hasn't been used to focus on lithium extraction. The reason we're working with Lilac is that their IP is around the beads or the pellets that they use. They're highly selective and they're very durable. So that means they take actually all the lithium out and they last a long time. So that keeps your, your, your cost down. Remember, we're not trying to come up with a brand new flow sheet for the industry. All we're doing is removing the evaporation ponds and putting in a iron exchange direct extraction process. And why are we doing that? Because it's faster, it's more efficient, you produce 
produce a high purity end product. And because the demand has changed, now we've moved from glass ceramics and, uh, and lubricants to batteries, that demand in the cathodes has changed. So we're trying to produce a quality product. Uh, then the second part of your question, what does a pilot uh, plant actually look like? Uh, we have one module finished. We're planning on building six of them. They stand quite high, but essentially they're just a, a vessel that carries water, in this case salty water, and then we have the pellets in that for a couple of hours, and then we can extract the, uh, the lithium out of the concentrate. And on your question about the time frame, we should be able to have uh, some initial products out perhaps during this calendar year, but really we're targeting to get the main products out of the pilot plant in February, March next year, uh, maybe as early as January, get those out, start the whole qualification process. Generally you start with 20 or 30 kilograms and then after that you move to sort of half tonne samples. And that's so that we can enter into this qualification process. Now that's important. If we were to produce a whole plant, We'd still have to go through that six, nine, twelve month qualification process by engaging in that straight out of our pilot plant and then probably an initial smaller commercial scale plant, we get into that whole process and that means we get into production and cash flow earlier. Steve, just in closing, uh, I understand you're in career at the moment. Uh, what's the mood like there? And from an operational perspective, what's the plan for Olaroz? Okay, so with Olaroz, we, we have a plan to drill there. Uh, we've got uh, approval for a couple of those holes. We'd like to get approval for all of them before we start a program. This is more cost effective. Uh, so we'll be updating that market fairly soon about that. Um, but the move here in Korea, uh, you need to understand that um, a number of the large uh, tier one battery makers are here, as well as the cathode makers. And uh, they have seen a lot of variability and quality of supply, both in carbonate and hydroxide to them uh, this year and so they're very focused on getting purity of product but they're also very focused on getting long-term agreements with uh, producers that produce high quality products. It's one of the few countries where they're very open to new technologies and so that's the reason I'm back here again uh, for a couple of weeks. They're always very engaging, they ask some of the best questions but best of all just like in Silicon Valley they're prepared to support new technology. Thanks, Steve. Look, we really are eagerly anticipating the results from this pilot plant. So uh, best of luck for that. And we, uh, we look forward to seeing how things progress at Olaroz and, and elsewhere. Thanks for your time. Definitely.